Welcome traders to this week's live market and trade analysis session with me, Patrick Munnerly. It is 1 p.m. GMT plus one. So we are going to get going here. Before we jump into today's charts, as always, want to adhere to the risk disclaimer. Most pertinent for today's presentation is the fact that views, opinions expressed by me are solely mine. They're not indicative or representative of those held by Tickmill UK or Tickmill Europe Limited. Those of you here for the first time, a brief introduction to myself. After I graduated from university, I left with some colleagues and went on to successfully co-found and exit a consulting startup focused on C-suite executive search for technology businesses. Essentially, I had a front row seat to the dot-com bubble, witnessing people make and lose a fortune in the market, sometimes quite literally overnight. So I decided to explore my curiosity for markets with some capital to play with and some time on my hands. I started day trading the S&P 500, or probably more appropriate at that stage, day gambling. After some early beginner's luck, I racked up some pretty solid gains. However, as is often the case, my beginner's luck ran out, and as the market phase changed, I began to average down into losing positions, giving back all my gains and ultimately experiencing a significant six-figure hit to my personal capital. Uh, to say this was a gut-wrenching and sobering experience is an understatement. So I really had to stand back and figure out if it was feasible for me to make a living from the markets. So I decided to get serious about trading, and I sought out a mentor with an excellent trading track record. Working with my mentor for a period of 18 months was a time during which I upped not just my technical game in terms of researching, developing extensively back and forward testing strategies that crucially suited my personality, and all of which were underpinned by a rigorous risk management approach. But most importantly, during the period of mentorship, I significantly developed my mental game. And probably most importantly of all, I made the watershed shift from being a highly goal-orientated individual focused on financial gains to becoming purely process-orientated. So what does that actually mean? Well, it means I had to stop focusing on what I could make from the markets and start focusing solely on managing my mindset to allow me to consistently execute my trading strategy oftentimes in the face of negative feedback from the markets in the form of losing trades. But once you become process orientated and have a professional trading mindset and understand the true nature of trading, uh, simply being a numbers game in which you're playing the probabilities, you lose the emotional investment and that hellish emotional roller coaster ride of living and dying by the outcomes of individual trades. So I'm no longer concerned with the outcome of an individual trade or even a small string of trades. My focus is on the next 100 trades. So I know if I focus on excellence in execution, my edge will demonstrate itself over an extended series of outcomes. A multi-strategy approach has delivered profitable annual returns since 2008. Since 2013, I've also been managing investor capital through a managed account service. Since 2010, I mentored hundreds of private traders of all experience levels, from complete novices to former CME floor traders, in developing the technical and mental skills to reap consistent returns from the markets. In addition to my fund management and mentoring, I'm also a resident market expert for Tickmill, exclusively providing uh, market and trade analysis to Tickmill clients. I provide an in-depth daily market outlook, breaking down the fundamental and technical drivers for the trading day ahead. I also provide daily technical trade setup videos through the, tick, uh, the Tickmill TradingView account. And on average, there's about two or three opportunities I'm actively tracking on a daily basis. I also run Tickmill's uh, Facebook group, eMini Strategy Facebook group, where I post a daily uh, trading plan outlining my pre-market thoughts for the trading session ahead. Um, I give my bias for the day ahead and specific action areas where I'm looking to engage the market. These pre-market plans have delivered over seven and a half thousand points of profit since we launched the group in um, April 2021. The second Tickmill strategy group I run it's for traders who really want to take their trading to the next level. The Tickmill Futures Telegram group is a real-time environment where on a daily basis I share in-depth insights, analysis, and trades. I also provide live market commentary during the opening hour of the New York Cash trading session. Essentially, this gives traders the opportunity to see how I dissect the markets and identify asymmetric trading opportunities. These sessions will act as a platform helping traders to develop a professional and consistent approach to navigating the markets 
and the mental mind games that must be my mastered to make it as a profitable market operator. So that gives you a, a flavor of where I'm coming from. Let's jump into the charts. We're going to start um, with the indexes. I'm using hourly and daily time frame uh, charts here as we uh, as we take a look at these, and then we're going to change things up a bit when we look at uh, forex and commodities. So, from a technical perspective, the lean on the bias was long uh, over the last week, and we have seen an upside extension. The target zone is forty one seventy four. Now, the 4174 represents the 3.618 extension of our potential wave two structure. It also coincides with an equality objective versus our swing low at 39.40. And if I extend this daily chart, you can see we have some triangle trend resistance potentially coming in there as well, 41.77. So this is going to be a key test, to my mind anyway. Uh, for the S&P as we head into these next couple of sessions. I'm looking for momentum divergence, which we've got in place here on the hourly time frame. You can see we're making new highs in price, but we're failing to make new highs with the momentum study. So I'm watching for bearish reversal patterns between the 4170, the 4200 area, uh, looking to engage on the short side, initially looking for a pullback back into test the 4120, 4130 area. And then from there, we'll see if buyers step back in, because if they do, then in all likelihood, we're going, this would be a wave four structure, and we would likely make a wave five high but into 4,200, uh, potentially as high as 4,225 would be my target for that. But for now, focus on how price responds in this 4,170 to 4,190 zone. And uh, we certainly have momentum, in, uh, momentum divergence in play here. So we're watching for any uh, bearish reversal patterns here to engage on the short side. The NASDAQ continues to extend higher. Last week, we were looking for a three-wave correction into that 13,150 area. That played out, we've extended to the upside. The upside is looking a little bit labored here. And the reason for that is that we have this momentum divergence, which is making things a little bit sticky as we try to extend to the upside. The target for this move now is the 13,500 area as the next upside objective. So what I've been watching for now is, let's just remove that and get rid of this for now, as that's passed. What we'd anticipate here now is a grind up into that target zone. So we'd certainly be looking for the highs of uh, Friday and yesterday. So 13,280, to the 13,300 area, I'd be looking for that to act as support. If it does, then we're looking for that extension up into 13,500 area. Look, Notice we've also got the weekly R1 up there as well. I would anticipate from here then for as long as we maintain the momentum divergence to get a more significant corrective move develop, ideally into the holiday uh, holiday tri um, holiday session coming up this this week. So uh, coming into Thursday, Friday, we have non-farm payrolls on Friday, and then the futures markets close uh, pretty quickly after that. So I think we could see some profits being booked into or ahead of that NFP release. Certainly if we're trading up into that 13,500 zone, I'd be watching for bearish reverse patterns there to engage on the short side. Equally now, what I'd also be watching would be any loss of this trend channel support as another indication that maybe we have uh, we, th th this high in that is currently in place is our uh, is, a, is going to be the uh, the end of this current sequence, and then we'd be looking for a pullback, something in similar in scope and scale to what we saw before this run up here. Uh, so we would just simply be dropping this down and bringing it in here, and you can see that we'd be looking for a retest into the high uh, value area, value area high thirteen thousand, just above thirteen thousand level as a way for pullback and then we'll see if we're going to extend again to the upside we do have a uh, a more meaningful upside objective in terms of the nasdaq given this daily swing structure uh, which would put us up into this triangle resistance weekly projected range resistance just below the fourteen thousand level and from there i would certainly anticipate that we see a more sustained pullback note we still have momentum divergence in play on the daily time frame Moving to the Dow Jones. Dow Jones is getting ready to test some pretty pivotal resistance as well, as we have this trend channel resistance or what could potentially be a bull flag. But for now, we will be watching to see how price responds into uh, just shy of 34,000. So 
the intraday time frame here, we will be looking for pullbacks to find support into the 33,600 to 33,560 area. As uh, buyers defend that zone, we look for another leg to the upside to target that 34,000 level. And then from there, we're watching for momentum divergence to be addressed and for a pullback to develop. Alternative scenario is we take out the trend channel support. And again, we use that as a signal that the current high is likely uh, is likely to be respected for at least a corrective pullback. We're not talking about calling tops or bottoms here. We're just talking about trading corrections. So uh, those are the two key areas for me. Any loss of 33,500, I'd be looking for pullbacks to find resistance and then looking for an extension to the downside. Equally, any move up into 34,000, just above there, be watching for various reversal patterns as long as we maintain momentum divergence to, uh, like I say, engage on the short side. Moving to the DAX. DAX has, uh, has a nice setup here looking for a move to test just above that 16,000 level. So the 16,000 on the daily here represents the one, two, seven extension of this last leg to the downside. And we also have 16,063 as the one, three, one extension from the swing low back down uh, just below the 15,000 level. So once again, any move up into this area, as long as we maintain momentum divergence, which we've got in play at the moment, I'd watch for bearish reversal patterns to engage on the short side. First target is going to be a move back down into the weekly pivot and weekly ascending trend channel support, 15,590s. Moving to the FTSE. Similar scenario. FTSE has tested into the equality objective here at the 7715, which we were looking for. Also, we had the weekly R1 there and we're seeing a pullback. So I'm looking... Uh, at this stage, the sequence doesn't look complete to me because we have this wave two structure and we'd be expecting something similar in scope and scale to develop for getting a fifth wave extension to the upside. And we, again, note we have this momentum divergence in play. So any move up into 77.50, I would anticipate we get bearish reversal patterns there. I'd be looking to fade that move. And my first target is going to be the test of the ascending trend channel support and the weekly pivot back down to 75.70s. Equally with this, uh, with this FTSE move here, uh, because we have technically completed a three-wave corrective move into that 77, uh, 77.15s, any loss of this trend channel support on a daily basis will be a bearish development, suggesting we could be starting another meaningful leg to the downside. Moving to the Nifty. <clears throat> The Nifty last week, we were looking at this bear flag scenario, looking for a breakdown, didn't get the breakdown. Instead, we've broken to the upside. We've taken out trend channel resistance here. Gaps, gap scenarios within a structure tend to, tend to act as a confirmation for a wave three structure. So what I'm looking for now is an advance above uh, 17,600 to fail. What I'm looking for then is the first pullback that retests this bear flag resistance uh, what that has now been broken out of and should act as support. We also have this prior trend channel uh, resistance also. So any move in back into 17,350 area, you want to watch a bullish reversal patterns. And again, I would be looking on the long side in the next upside objectives going back into these prior swing highs, 17,850s. Moving to the Hang Seng. That's quite a nice structure as well here. We are looking for a pullback now into 20,045. Watch for bullish reversal patterns there to engage on the long side. The next upside objective for me is going to be 21,000. So just keep an eye on any test of 20,045, which bullish reversal patterns. Take out the corrective trend channel through the uh, potential I <coughs> X, X wave high here. And then we look for that extension into the 21 thousand level like i say what i'm going to do now is i'm going to jump to a different chart layout for us to review uh, the fx landscape and the commodities so dollar index we are looking for the 101 level to get tested this morning we have tested a potential double bottom here at 101.50s 
Looks like we've got some bids emerging. We haven't been able to close below there. Close below there will should set up that uh, that 101 level test. And then from there, I'm anticipating we could see uh, the potential for a more sustained uh, corrective move. Certainly, if we test into that uh, 169.0, those price swing lows, I think we get a decent bounce from that zone. And our first objective in terms of the bounce is going to be something similar in scope and scale to that last corrective move. And we can see that if we did that um, from that anticipated low area, we'd also have uh, some trend channel development there as well. So I'm looking for any move into 101, into these uh, 160 areas. Watch, we've got some nice bullish momentum divergence in play. This is a four hour, four hour chart here, but the weekly up here and the daily down here, just, uh, just to clarify that. But uh, this is going to be the area where I think we can see a, a pullback in the dollar. I'm not suggesting a low. I think we've got. So I think we can trade uh, further to the downside. But in terms of just trading sequences, um, this sequence I think could see uh, an interim low put in place uh, on that next push down. Looking to the euro dollar, similar setup uh, in the euro dollar. I think we're putting in a potential triangle scenario here now before we extend once more. So we're looking for a break of the. Uh, ascending triangle resistance that comes in 109.30 so any move up into 109.40s I'd be looking for an extension then into our next upside objective which is the 110.30s note with the euro we do have this uh, equality objective versus the swing structure in play here and our swing low at 107s we've got that 111.20s Keep that in mind. But first target, I think, is going to be a retest of that prior swing high up into that uh, that 110.30 zone before then likely seeing another pullback before trying to make the next leg higher. Sterling. Sterling seeing some tr strength traded into our target zone. 125.35s. And we're seeing a pullback here. Now, what we are ultimately looking for Sterling to do here is test this weekly trend channel resistance. Let's just sharpen that up and get the level 126.50. So let's see how we can get there. So I'd be looking for any pullbacks from this current zone to find support into these prior highs and then get this final extension up into that weekly trend line resistance. From there, I will be anticipating we see a more meaningful correction. And certainly that would coincide with the dollar index making new lows, the euro trading up into that 110.30, 111 area. So you can see how the, as usual, that these, uh, these pairs, these majors are syncing up and the structure uh, and, and the synchronicity in terms of the structures and the sequences they're trading. So I'm looking for that test of the descending weekly trend channel resistance. And from there, I'll certainly be watching for um, bearish reversal patterns to just fade that move for a, for a decent pullback at a minimum. Dollar yen <coughs> um, continues to trade uh, just below that 134 area. I still think we had uh, lower in terms of dollar yen at the moment. I would look for any move into this 133.90, 134 as a shorting opportunity. First target is going to be back down into the pivot here, 132.20s. If we can get through there, then we'd be looking back into 130.80s. And then the ideal target is this 129.48 versus this swing structure that we have in play at, uh, at the moment. Very choppy trade in terms of the dollar yen. Uh, certainly if you're uh, trading anything above, I guess, like a 15 minute or 30 minute chart at this stage. The Aussie dollar came close to our target area. Uh, I think we should see one more push now for the Aussie into test the 6820s from there. I'd be watching for bearish reversal patterns. And certainly we think about a, a retest in terms of the play from there. So any rejection at the 6820s, three wave corrective move. Firstly, we'd look at the midpoint of the channel, which is, seems to have been in play and respected 6750s. And then we're looking for another leg down into the high volume node and trend channel support, 6690s. And then from there, we'll see if buyers step back in and try to form a base here for higher prices in terms of the Aussie dollar. We still have that weekly target zone way up at the 7320s. So there's scope for the Aussie to trade higher here. We'll see if we can hold uh, the next support test. But for now, we're looking at 6820s, watch for bearish reversal patterns. 
we'd be looking to engage on the short side, looking for that deeper pullback into the high volume node. Similar setup, obviously, in the Kiwi. And again, what I would say, and, and, and this is just a, a, a point of reference for you guys, is that where you get this heavily overlapping price action, more often than not, that indicates corrections uh, and corrections that are then followed by uh, trend continuation and trend had been down before we entered into this phase. Obviously, it can be a more meaningful base that's been put in place, but we've been looking for some key markers to be taken out on the upside before we consider that. So for me at the moment, 63.6 is the area I'm watching. Note the RBNZ, um, the Reserve Bank of New Zealand meet this evening. Any move up into the 63.60s, I watch for bearish reversal patterns. My first target is going to be 62.50s. And then we have the high volume node just below there at 62.30s. Gold. Now, this one is interesting. We have this ascending triangle scenario. And I've got a uh, couple of ways of playing this. First of all, I watch Freddy move up into the 127 extension of the triangle from the top to the base, which gives us 2036, weekly projected range resistance just above 2045. From there, I would anticipate we get a pullback. And that pullback should retest the triangle resistance. And we've got this trend line support. So any pullback that finds support just above the 2000 level, that's uh, if you can get bullish reversal patterns from there, that's a pretty rock solid setup to play for an extension to the upside. And I'd be targeting a test of 2100 as the next upside objective in terms of gold. So keep an eye on gold in the next few sessions. I think this one has, uh, has a pretty clean structure and sequence to, to trade off. So uh, that one is definitely gonna be on my radar. Crude oil. Obviously crude, the, uh, the setup we, I was tracking with crude oil. Uh, didn't play out and we uh, it was kind of blown out of the water on the basis of the move by OPEC over the weekend. And so what do we have in terms of structure here now? Well, we have a potential one, two, we're looking for a wave three high in place, then a wave four low, and then a fifth wave extension. Remember where you get gaps in price, more often than not, that's con confirming that we're in a, a wave three cycle. So we'll be waiting now for some momentum divergence to develop. Then we'll be looking for the first pullback that is equal in scope or scale to uh, the wave two pullback. And I'll be overlaying wherever we get that high. And that will give us a target zone to re-enter to play for that fifth wave extension to the upside. This is one I'll be sharing through the trading view over the coming sessions as it develops. At this stage, I've just been mapping it out using some uh, some basic levels here, but we'll I'll get better definition to the structure once we get uh, the potential for a, uh, a wave for high in place. And certainly I see decent opportunity in crude oil. Bitcoin, still consolidating and still looking for a test of the 30,000 level from where I would anticipate, certainly where we had this level of consolidation, we get a pullback to at least retest these highs as support or break down and retest the lows as a base before the next leg to the upside. Uh, so just this one is a, a bit of a slow burner at the moment. Let's just see if we can get a, a flag scenario here. Yeah. Uh, it's a bit of a mess. I would uh, personally, I'd be waiting for the break and see the quality of the pullback after the breakouts. And then, uh, and then that will give us guidance as to the next play in terms of Bitcoin. Apple. <laughs> broken to the upside. So the key area for me now with Apple is this weekly trend line resistance comes in just above 170. And that's uh, that's going to be a key test to my mind for Apple. Let me just see what we've got here in terms of the quality objective. The other area will be the 177, which would represent uh, an equal leg. So anything between 17, uh, let me see. Yeah, 170 to 177. I'm going to be paying close attention to the price action there, certainly with momentum divergence developing. We've even got it here on the daily time frame. You can see we're making new highs in price, but momentum not confirming this yet. So really want to pay close attention to that weekly trend line test and or the test of the equality objective, 177. Tesla, just to round things up. Let's see. So we we had a a weak break out of that prior uh, corrective trend channel. Let me just redraw this for you guys now. Use that. 
So I would anticipate at the moment that we're going to an X, W, Y scenario. So as we hold the current resistance at the 207 handle, I've been looking for price to pull back into the quality objective 153 before trying to set a base again to break out to the upside and get a test of that 225, which is the uh, weekly trend line resistance in Tesla. So those are the charts I am tracking as we uh, head into this holiday shortened week. Remember, I, I did note last week, obviously, Oftentimes, you will find into these major holidays that we do get uh, corrections in trends just before the holiday period as, uh, as traders and investors want to book profits so they don't have to be worrying about positions over the holiday period. And then we tend to get those trends reemerge as, uh, as players return to the market. It's been spring break in the US, uh, Easter now, uh, over the next week or so. And so liquidity is, uh, is dropping off. Uh, lower participation can lead to exaggerated moves. So if you do get into a position, honor your stop and don't try and fight these uh, these moves because they can get exaggerated uh, with the lower liquidity. Okay, are there any questions? Anyone want me to take a look at an instrument I haven't covered in uh, in my presentation? There, I'm happy to do that. Or any trading related question or question related to a chart I've covered? Happy to. Uh, to respond now. Okay, I can't see any questions coming through. So at this stage, I am going to uh, wrap this session up here. We will reconvene next Tuesday uh, after the Easter holidays. And so, uh, as always, traders, plan the trade, trade the plan, and most importantly, manage your risk. Until next week, thanks very much. <laughs>